Hey everyone, so now we're going to get a little bit more comfortable with matrix notation. Uh, and so if you feel like you already have a good handle on this, then feel free to kind of skim through this and also be thankful to your linear algebra TA professor because I'm pretty much just doing this as a review in case someone didn't have as good of an experience in linear algebra. Okay, so let's take a look at this. x1 prime is equal to ax1 plus bx2 and then x2 prime is equal to cx1 plus dx2. Okay. Notice, this one right here, this first line, this is a first order ODE by itself, right? And this is also a first order ODE. But they're kind of related, right? Because they both have the variables x1 and x2 in them. So there must be a way to combine them and probably to analyze them. Right? So let's try that. So let's say we wanted to write x1, x2, and then prime, which means to take the derivative of each component in here, which will give us exactly this part, right? Is equal to, okay, we want to multiply it on that same x1 and x2, right? And now we have to fill something in here. So we want to multiply some matrix on a 2 by 1 in order to get a 2 by 1. So this matrix here must be 2 by 2. Okay, And we can actually just pull off the coefficients off of there. So a, b, c, and d. And so this, all of this right here, is equivalent to everything right here. So that's good. Now, let's be a little bit more sleek, if we write this as, if we define this part to be the x vector prime and this to be the x vector, right, then we can write this as x prime is equal to a, b, c, d times x, and then also let's just make this an arbitrary matrix, big A. So finally we get down to x prime is equal to a times x. And this is our golden equation for this section, and really for this chapter. This is what you're going to be solving countless amounts of times. We're just going to see every case scenario, any possible A, B, C, and D that leads to different kind of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then try to solve that. Because this system of these are systems of two first order linear equations, uh, ODEs, and so solving this will give us um, the solution to both the x1 prime equation and x2 prime equation. So that's good. Great, now let's look at this one. I put an example here. Essentially just translate this into what we have above. So this would just be, if we bring this down, this is x, y prime, right, is equal to, okay, I'm gonna have an x, y vector here, right? And then in here I'll have a three minus one and a one and a two. Right? And that should work, right? Because if you multiply this one, like this 3 and this negative 1, onto here and then onto here, you get exactly this top equation. And same thing with other t the other uh, y prime equation. And so then we can just define, okay, let's just say x prime is equal to exactly x, y, which means that our x vector is exactly to just x, y. And there you go. That is how you would translate something like this. So whenever you see something like this, always translated to a matrix, and you're good. Okay, great. If you've already read this while I was driving, I'll just read it aloud to you real quick. This is very important. Any second order ODE, so anything from chapter four, can be rewritten as a system of two first order ODEs. So this is kind of a powerful technique. In case you don't know how to do something, you can always put into a system and then solve it that way. Or you can also take it from a system and put it into a higher order ODE if that's easier. So you can flip flop between the two. So here I post to you a uh, ODE and we are going to um, put it into a matrix to some matrix notation. Okay, and I believe I gave this before. If not, mm, it looks like I didn't, but that's okay. Let me walk you through the steps of how you do this, because it can be a little tricky at first. You define x1 and x2, 
Okay, so you define, and this goes for any second order OD that you deal with that you want to turn to a system. You define x1 to be y, then you define x2 to be y prime. Okay, so why would I do that? Because then x1 prime is equal to y prime, right? And then x2 prime is equal to y prime prime. Good. So now let's take this guy and put him over here, combine everything that we know. So y prime prime is equal to minus y prime plus 2y, right? Now let's just transform this thing with these four variables that we have here. So y prime prime is exactly x2 prime. It's the only place I see it here. Minus y prime is exactly x2. And I would say use x2 because we want whatever's on the right hand side to not have derivatives attached to it. So this will be a minus x2 right here. And then a y is just a plus 2x1. Good. Now, if, if you notice from up above, we wanted an x2 prime equation and x1 prime equation. So now we just need to ask ourselves, okay, what is x1 prime equal to? And x1 prime is equal to exactly y prime, which, so right here, which we have exactly right here, right? So that's just equal to x2. Great. Now, if we write this a little bit more cleanly or more organized, I guess, you can write this as x1 prime is equal to 0 x1 plus x2, and then x2 prime is equal to 2x1 minus x2, right? Yeah, and then from here, it's pretty obvious that you can translate this into a matrix, right? So from here, you can just say that x1, x2 prime is equal to 0, 1, 2, minus 1, x1, x2. Good. And so this is our A matrix. This is really what we care about. Um, it's usually assumed that we always have like an x vector here, and then we have the derivative of the x vector over here. So this is what we care about. This is our A. And so to prove this to you that this works, let's try to find the characteristic equation of this uh, matrix. matrix. So determinant of this a minus lambda i is exactly, so determinant sign 0 minus lambda 1, 2, minus 1, minus lambda. And then this yields minus lambda times minus 1 minus lambda minus 2 is equal to 0. And then scrolling down a little bit further, this will give you lambda squared plus lambda minus 2 is equal to 0. And this is our characteristic equation, right? So take a look at this. Remember what we had up front? We had y prime prime plus y prime minus 2y. Okay, so let me write that down. y prime prime plus y prime minus 2y is equal to 0. So remember when we were doing chapter 4 that you can just replace all your y's and derivatives with lambdas. And so if I didn't lie to you, the characteristic equation should be the same, right? So they are. So if we translate into this characteristic equation where we just remember replace derivatives of y with the corresponding power of lambda, so y prime prime goes to lambda squared plus y prime is plus lambda, and then minus 2 y is just minus 2. These are the exact same characteristic equation, as they should be. So that's a quick check. Um, and so this should also, hopefully you're getting some intuition for your DFEQs at this point. Um, the answer to both the second order ODE, so this thing right here, as I posed to you the problem initially, is going to look very, very similar to the system of the two first orders. So this one right here. They're only going to vary by very, like, one thing, and that one thing is the eigenvectors, because now we have to take care of uh, vector fields, which in the equation we don't really have to, because everything's in terms of y and x or y and t. And so just keep that in mind. So a lot of what you learn in chapter 4 is going to translate very well. I know I keep saying it, but it's true. So when in doubt, fall back on your chapter 4 knowledge.
cool. Okay, next video we're going to talk about all the various um, linear systems that arise from constant coefficients. So, great. See you then.